I'm Patrick Botticelli. We're in our new location in Millstone Township, New Jersey. And today I'm going to feature the all new 2021 Airstream Flying Cloud 27FB. This trailer is 28 foot from the center of the ball to the back bumper. And it is 9 foot 9 from the ground to the top of the air conditioning. It has an 8 foot 5 and a half inch exterior width and an interior width of 8 foot 1 inch. Gives you an interior uh, headroom of six foot seven and a half inches. This trailer has a MSRP completed of 105,650, and it has a base MSRP of $96,400. The factory options that are on this trailer are the upper bunk. There's an upper bunk option you can get now in the 27 FB and the 25 FB in the Flying Cloud and International Series. Uh, that bunk could hold up to 200 pounds and uh, we'll go into, when we get inside I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, that bunk option is $1,500. Uh, this has the second air conditioner so it comes standard with a 15,000 B2 air conditioning with heat pump and 30 amp service. When you get the second air conditioner on a 27 FB it goes in the front in the bedroom and that's a 13,500 BTU air conditioning with electric heat pump. That upgrades electrical service to 50 amps so uh, that way you can run both air conditioners at the same time. It deletes a generator prep port on the front of the trailer. It will come standard. You'll see that in the standard specifications. Uh, that's not there anymore, but you can still plug a generator into the main power connection. That option is $2,200. And this also has the full window awning package. So we highly recommend the window awnings. These are really beautiful Zip D awnings with some umbrella material. This is a new color for uh, 2021. Now that option helps shade over your windows and shades the whole entire other side of your trailer. Uh, really keeps the sun down from the heat inside the trailer. Uh, that option is $1,550. And then this has a solar charging system. So standard from the factory, Ocean builds a trailer with what they call a solar prep. It has some wires that is prepped for a controller, has a port on the roof, and that will allow you to add a solar charging system later on. Uh, Airstream ships the trailers without batteries if you don't get the solar charging system so the dealer can install standard lead acid batteries or you could upgrade to different style batteries. When you get the solar charging system Airstream gives you 180 watt solar panels so there's two 90 watt panels on there and then they give you absorbed glass mat AGM batteries 12 volt group 24, uh, group 24 series and uh, they're in parallel so this has the solar charging system so it also has those batteries. That is a $2,600 option. The national freight charge is $1,400, which gives you the complete MSRP of $105,650. Uh, let's step inside and take a look at the new decor. This is the new decor for 2021. Airstream revamped the Flying Cloud series as well as the International series and gave them a fresh new look. Uh, this is the sunlit maple decor. All right, so the cabinet, the flooring, the countertop, the hardware, this is all part of the uh, Sunlit Maple decor. And then you have a choice of two different ultra leathers. You have the Carolina clay, which is uh, more of an earth tone, a brown tone. And then you have a gray uh, look, which is Seattle mist. They're both really nice. They're nice and neutral. You can get different color pillows to dress up the interior decor. But it's all vinyl flooring throughout laminate over plywood so there's no particle board or sticker wrap anywhere. Uh, really nice hardware they put on the trailer and then the countertop is a laminate when you go on the Flying Cloud series and it will be a solid surface on the International series. Uh, both the models share the same exact floor plan just different decors. This dinette is 42 by 97 so this whole dinette area folds into a bed. You can sleep two adults or two kids here. And what you do is you remove all the cushions and the table lifts up unclipped from the wall the leg tucks in it swings down and then you assemble the backrest cushions right here and there into the middle and that will give you that bed this bed right here is a 66 by 46 so it's 66 inches long by 46 inches wide and this slides out and then these backrests you, know, uh, you can squeeze them in against the wall and that makes a bed and you can actually sleep two adults here as well which I have a lot of customers that do. Then you can remove this bolster 
and it'll give you your full width of the bed. Also, a lot of customers uh, fold the dinette down into a bed and grab all these extra cushions here and lean them up against the back wall, and it makes it some uh, lounge so you can watch television. In this uh, trailer, they redesigned the whole kitchen galley area for 2021. Instead of the round sink that came out, they squared it off, which increased the storage capacity quite a bit. Instead of the round sink, it has a deep stainless steel sink, and they have beautiful fi uh, fixtures on board, and the cover comes with it too. And then, instead of bringing this all the way down to the floor, they left it up so it's a more open feeling here. So you can put a door, dog dish there if you wanted to. Over here by the door, there's a drawer that slides out that's wider and deeper than the previous model year. And they still leave this area open so you could kick off your shoes and throw them down there. And this cabinet over here, there's a very large waste pail that comes with the trailer. So I like that they put it by the entry door because if you're outside entertaining and you want to throw some trash away, you don't have to walk all the way around inside. You can just reach in and throw it away. We have some light switch controls here. They're all LED lights on board. Uh, there's a lot of extra counter space behind the faucet so you can put some additional items here. Beautiful ocean air roller shades on board. They uh, soften the tone of the lights, the style of the, the lights. There's uh, some key hooks here by the entry door. Instead of the radius curved upper cabinets, they went with a flat look and they upgraded to premium hardware on the top. So these cabinets are a little bit deeper and uh, there's an extra, extra height for 2021. And then this is a different color laminate than the laminate down below and it has a gloss to it. So it gives it more of a contemporary look. Airstream upgraded the solar controller to the Victron Energy and then they upgraded the inverter system. It's still 1000 watt pure sine wave, but it is the progressive dynamics inverter system. So you can control that from here. Sea level two tank monitoring system is the same, uh, but the tank sizes change slightly. We have a 37 gallon freshwater tank now, 35 gallon gray waste tank, and a 40 gallon black waste tank. Black waste is your toilet waste, gray waste is your sink and shower. Drawers are the same for 2021 that they were last year and the years before. Got three nice drawers here. This flips down because the wheel well cuts into the body. Same thing here, but Airstream is very mindful of not wasting any space. So they do spend extra money to put the hardware on and make this an opening cabinet. The Furion gas oven is standard. It comes with an option to delete the gas oven and put a convection microwave here instead. But a lot of people like to have this and the slide out pantry microwave, which is the standard feature. So that microwave runs off your electricity. You have to be plugged into shore power to run that or a generator. This will run off your gas, your propane gas supply in the trailer. Uh, this also has three burners up top here. And then you can select which burner you want and then spin the lighter. And then it has a flush mount glass top. Get, increase your counter space when you're not cooking cooktop ventilation events outside. All the air conditioning and electric heat pumps are ducted. We have ducted air conditioning. It's called Quiet Stream. Really reduces noise level inside the trailer and gives you even temperature throughout. So that was an improvement that Airstream made on a 25 and up back in 2015 and we still have it today. People love it. These vents are directional and you could shut off certain vents and dedicate more air to one area in the trailer. You have intakes here on the ceiling, but you do have to clean the filters from time to time. There is a skylight in the galley with a shade, so you can really darken the interior with this. And then we have vista view windows with shades as well. They could pull up, and they're stiff so they don't sag when you're driving. Ocean air roller shades here on the side. Uh, LG television and fixed position in the galley. Uh, the stitching on this ultra leather, I love the work that Airstream does. The foam density is uh, very comfortable to set on, it doesn't bottom out. This flips down for additional storage and it comes with the bins. There's a cutout here for your furnace to return. And then there's another one 
here a compartment that flips down for additional storage. Uh, the furnace is a 25,000 BTU uh, force air propane furnace, runs on battery to spin the blower and, it, and there's duct work throughout the trailer and also heats your tanks. So if you get an unexpected drop in temperature at night, it gets below freezing for a short period of time. As long as that furnace is on, that will protect your tanks from freezing. By no means is it designed to be a four season trailer. Uh, if you get day and night temperatures below freezing, you should really consider winterizing the trailer, evacuating the water out of the plumbing system, and you can still camp and sleep and you just won't have running water. Underneath the dinette, there is an inverter circuit. There's also another inverter circuit up here in the cabinet next to your Blu-ray player. So when you turn the inverter switch on in the galley, it'll power up these outlets up to 1,000 watts. So no hair dryers or toasters, but small portable electronic devices are fine. So Blu-ray players here, there's USB input here. This is uh, uh, wired to both televisions with HDMI. There's USB charge port off to the side. I have the remote controls here up top. The stereo, the JL Audio Stereo, has a little cover. If you have it on, you want it, don't want the lights flashing, you could cover it up. And then you could turn the stereo on on the front. And uh, very nice speakers. There's four speakers on board, and there's also a subwoofer underneath the dinette. And then you got full blackout curtains all the way around. Now there's four panels here, so you could, you could section them off. And then insect screens on every window that opens. So there's three big windows here in the galley and there's three big windows in the bedroom. Comes with a wireless backup camera. We call it a driving camera because you can leave it on when you're driving. So as long as your parking lights are on in your vehicle and this is plugged into a 12 volt socket in your vehicle, it will power up the camera on the back of the trailer which will give you the view of what's going on behind you. There's another storage compartment here on this side, which is you know duplicate of this side, just doesn't have the cutout for the Blu-ray. Up top we have a fantastic fan. This fan has a motorized lid, variable speed controller, and a thermostat to kick the fan blade on and off, depending on your set temperature. Uh, it also has a rain sensor, we'll shut it down when it rains, and it'll open uh, it, you'll have to reset it to open it back up. There's a uh, Seven cubic foot automatic two-way refrigerator. This runs on gas or electric. You you turn it on, and if you put on automatic, it will sense if you're plugged into electricity or not. If you're not, it'll run on propane. And uh, you turn it on the day before your trip. It takes seven hours to remove and absorb all that heat out of the refrigerator. And uh, then what you do is you load your items in it before you're about to travel. Shut the door. Leave it shut turn the fridge off, turn the propane off, drive. You have a long time of driving that you could do before you should pull over and turn this back on. That's probably when you're gonna be exhausted and wanna camp out for the night. Uh, so this is a very high quality refrigerator Airstream uses. There's storage above it. There's also storage below. The wheel wall cuts in here as well. There's a furnace duct here on the floor. Propane leak detector that's hardwired to your battery. There's a smoke detector up top here. There's a fire extinguisher by the entry door, emergency egress window in the bedroom, and all the windows are safety glass. So everything is built to RVIA code and requirements. In the wardrobe, big difference between a 25FB and a 27FB is the width of the wardrobe. It's double when you go to the 27FB. It has a light so you can see at night. A rod here with some grooves in it so your clothes hangers could stay put when you're driving. A panel here for access to the shower fixture if you ever needed to repair. And then access panels here underneath that will allow you to get to your water pump and the siphon tube that they build in, the winterizing kit that they build in. Uh, that way you could uh, winterize your trailer on the fly if you needed to. In the hallway we have a privacy curtain. So instead of the full debt accordion door we had for many, many years, uh, Airstream decided to make it a little bit more elegant with a curtain uh, so it doesn't make all that noise when you slide it across. And there's another one in the bedroom area to give you privacy there as well. Uh, above the slide out pantry microwave, there is a pantry storage with a shelf up top. It's all pocket hole screw construction so there's no staples. I have to worry about coming out. Everything that's in this trailer was carried through that entry door. So Airstream builds the shell first, 
they finished the interior shell, they put the vinyl floor down on, on top of the new composite floor, from has a composite floor for 2021 versus the outdoor exposure plywood, Tonga Group plywood we have previously. And then they hand carry all the cabinet and furniture inside and position it. So none of this furniture has anything to do with the structural integrity of the shell. Uh, so you can take everything back out and the shell will be just as strong. There's the lower pantry. And then down below we have the power converter charger. There's a multi-stage charger. Has all your breakers and fuses. So breakers are for your 120 volt uh, AC current. And then the DC current, which is off a of battery, has uh, 12 volt fuses here on the side. And then the bottom portion is a multi-stage battery charger. So there is a fan that will kick on periodically to cool the battery charger down when you're under heavy load. Uh, moving to, into the bath area, we have a skylight here as well. The shower has a light inside. New shower door style, so we had like lines in it in previous years. This is just a little bit more privacy. Has a magnetic strip to keep it shut and a safety latch when you're driving. It's fiberglass with two-piece uh, construction with an overlap at the seam here. There's a drain plug that you could use when you're driving to prevent the P-trap from uh, escaping water and allowing uh, tank uh, venting inside the trailer. Up top there is a vent line fan that you push up first and then turn on to vent out the steam out of the shower. It has a uh, premium hardware here, it has a Moen uh, faucet diverter and then the shower wand comes off the wall and you could set your temperature, rinse off, pause, lather up, turn it back on. And you can take a shower in this and really limit yourself to like two or three gallons, which is nice. You can take a longer shower if you wish, uh, but if you're trying to conserve water, you can really do that with that pause. There's also a clothesline in here that you could pull across and you can hang light items from and you can lock it in place. And then on the other side of the hall, let me swing the door all the way around, we have the bathroom. So this is what they call a center split bath. So you can walk through the bathroom but have privacy on both sides. Porcelain dramatic toilet. There's storage here next to the toilet with a toilet paper holder in the cabinet. Another storage below. And these have little lips on the edge so that keeps it shut. There's a foot pedal on the toilet that allows you to flush or put partial and uh, fill the bowl. There's storage below the sink here. And then back here is the new tankless Girard water heater. That is LP gas only, it uses battery to control. So as long as you have battery uh, on and propane on, you, you could use your tankless water heater. There's some low point drains underneath it for winterization. When we give an orientation here at our dealership, we're going to give you some pointers on how to winterize the new trailers. It's going to be different than previous model years. J latches to keep all the cabinets shut. Premium detachable hinges, which are adjustable. So if you ever needed to change the angle as things settle and expansion contraction, you could do so with the hardware on board. Stainless steel sink in here. Delta chrome faucet. GFCI protected electrical outlet. The water heater, you can control your temperature up and down from here. You can turn it on and off from here. So this is uh, where your central control for the water heater is. You have light switch here. If it's too bright, you can shut one side off completely. There's a towel bar off to the side, a ledge to store some additional items. This mirror lifts up for additional storage here as well. Towel bar behind me. And then up on the ceiling, we have an air conditioning duct and a vent line bathroom fan to vent stale air out of the bathroom. Just got to push and pull that up and down as you're using it. There's a furnace duct here down on the floor as well. And with the bathroom door shut, you got plenty of room to wash your hands, do your hair without, you know, having to leave the door open. In the bedroom, we have another privacy curtain that pulls across give this area privacy from the rest of the trailer. The bed is a 60 by 75 queen bed, premium mattress. Airstream does a really good job sourcing mattresses for their customers. It has rounded edges so it's easier to walk around. This is also available in a twin bed. So you have 34 
inches by 80 inch long twin beds on each side with an aisle down the middle, storage all underneath, and a nightstand in, in the middle. So it's available either way. Both models are available with the upper bunk options, about $1,500 option. It's 31 wide by 86 inches long. And just to give you an idea, I'm five foot nine, 165 pounds. It's a little awkward to get into, but I could fit. You know, it's a little hard to turn over, but for two kids, you could put two little kids up here and they could be comfortable. It's a nice uh, a mattress that's about two and a half inches thick, and this holds up to 200 pounds, so I'm safe on it. This is not going to be available as a retrofit for models that don't have the bunk. If it has the upper cabinet, it's not going to be finished behind there with the aluminum sheets. The aluminum uh, would be fastened to the back of the cabinet. So if you really want this option, you got to order it that way from the factory. Otherwise, it could be a very costly upgrade. Second air conditioner in this bedroom. These are the intake returns for it. Underneath the bunk, we have two speakers, USB charge ports, directional reading lights, and your full blackout privacy curtains. There's a nightstand on either side with storage, electrical outlet either side. These are regular outlets. These do not operate off your inverter. So you got same thing on both sides. This is the owner's manual packet. The bed lifts up and gains you access to storage bins. You can see it's all plywood with laminate, and they finish it on both sides. It's not just bare plywood. So they really have spent a lot of attention to detail in making this trailer. This bin slides out for additional storage. And then you can even reach into the trunk if you needed to. If you left something in here and you needed to grab it, you could get to it from inside the trailer. And then the sides are left open so you don't have to worry about flipping a door down to get to your, your bin storage. There's a stacked window on this side. So people always ask, well, why do they have a full size there and a stacked? This is the side that your awning's on. So by raising the height of the window up a little bit, when you have it open, you have less of a chance of hitting your head on it when you're walking around outside. So Airstream's very mindful of their customers and they get a lot of feedback from customers at rallies and events, and those are incorporated inside the trailer. So you have three different heights, middle, low. You just want to keep even pressure on both handles, and you really want to make sure that you lock them down in place before you start towing. You don't want one of these windows to come open on you. And then you can just slide your curtain across to give you your full privacy. On the other side of the bedroom, there's a television, it's an LG television. It's on an articulating arm, so you can really angle it to you know, your desired angle. And you can lock it in place when you're towing so it's not swinging around. There's a release here in the bottom. You have ceiling light switch with your dimmable lights in the ceiling. And then next to the TV, we have the cable input. There's a cable input on the outside of the trailer. This TV's wired to an antenna on the roof or your outside cable satellite connection. There's an HDMI port here, which is tied into the Blu-ray Blu player. And then the television's plugged into an inverter circuit. And this is a pass-through inverter, so when you plug into electricity at a campground, in order for this outlet to work, you do not have to turn your inverter on. It will work off the electricity at a campground. Some earlier model years, uh, if you plugged into an inverter circuit, when you were plugged into shore power, you still had to turn the inverter on. You don't have to do that anymore. Emergency exit window, two red handles, pull, twist, lift evenly, and you could quick release your screen to climb out if you needed to. It's a very large 30 inch window that they give you on board. Let's walk back up to the front area. By the entry door, there's a grab handle to get in and out. Um, very important for our customers. The door width is 26 inches, so it's a little bit wider than the industry standard of the door. And uh, let's take a walk around the outside. At the entry door, there's an extruded aluminum piece here that allows you to sweep the floor out easier. There's grip tape here. Look at this thick channel they use for the entry door. This is one of the strongest entry doors I've seen in the industry. It's all TIG welded here at the bottom. It's even angled out, so if water came behind the door, it's going to hit here and roll out underneath the trailer and out. Uh, 
This goes all the way around. It's TIG welded at the top. There's a gutter rail at the top. Aluminum polished grab handle here right, right by the entry door. And then the aluminum bifold step that you could flip one step up and not have both if you didn't need it. And then you lift up on the front and tuck it away. And it's all flush when you're driving, so you don't have to worry about it sticking out or down and scraping anything. And you flip that out, and then you pull from the back. And that's how you get in. Very sturdy step, wide treads here. Uh, entry door has screen door guards on the screen that detaches from the main door and swings around and locks in place. And this is, allows you to grip fit to the handle if you're inside the trailer. TIG welded here as well. Stainless steel hinge with uh, six rivets on each hinge. And then this trailer has a 5,868 pound dry weight. So that's before factory options, but includes uh, full tanks of propane. So that's what it weighs for you for factory options. It gives you a 1,732 pound net carrying capacity. That's, that's water, luggage, food, clothing, whatever you're going to load inside the trailer, you have that amount of uh, weight. Now you can deduct a little bit for the window awnings and the second air conditioner and the solar charging system, but not a lot. And then it, the tow weight, the hitch weight of the trailer is 791 pounds. That's before we add the second air conditioner and the upper bunk. That's what the trailer weighs on the back of your vehicle. And that includes full tanks of propane. So that will increase a little bit depending on what options you have and how you load the trailer. The gross vehicle weight rating, that's the most a trailer could possibly weigh, is 7,600 pounds. So you don't want to go over that weight, it's going to be very hard to. With that amount of power growth carrying capacity, they're giving you plenty of payload to put the items that you normally put in. The average customers put five or 600 pounds of weight in their trailer. Heavy duty deadbolt lock here, entry door lock here, you can lock it from the inside, and then it comes with two separate keys, so that it's uh, very many different type of key variables so it's not like the same key opens every airstream some other manufacturers have few keys that they use so uh, it's a little bit more secure if you get an airstream signature bank bolt shut extruded aluminum belt line protection with chrome insert rubber rail protection here in the bottom that's the transition from the aluminum i call aluminum body to the underbelly and banana wrap has flex foil insulation below the floor and then the whole underside is wrapped in aluminum. So everything is wrapped up so you don't see an exposed floor underneath. And then there's jack locations on back, two back corners with a sticker with a plate that's riveted to the frame so you know where to jack it up. Because you don't want to punch through the aluminum here. There's a outside LED step light here. Manual stabilizer jacks all four corners. So you got manual jacks and a manual awning on a flying cloud. When you go up to an international, you get power awning manual jacks, and when you go up to the Globetrotter, you get power awning power jacks. So there's different equipment levels as you go up. LED running lights on the exterior. Beautiful panoramic rear window. Uh, people love to be able to back this in and take advantage of the view. Cast aluminum taillight with LED lights here, double lights, very bright, very safe. This back window opens all the way out. Airstream makes a bike rack accessory you can buy aftermarket. It's about $750 installed. Uh, we have them here at the dealership. They're very popular. They can hold up to 77 pounds, so you be mindful of what you load on it. Uh, you don't want to load too much weight in the back of the trailer because you could cause it to sway. Polished aluminum rear bumper with bumper cap protections on the corner. Rear bumper storage. Allows you to get to access any items that could get wet. This is an outside wet store, so blocks of wood, wheel chocks, extra power cords, extra waste hose you can put back here and keep it separate from your interior uh, storage. License plate bracket with light. Some roll up material on the morning. You can pull this down, slip this around, and roll it up. And then this metal wrap to protect it when uh, it's out in the element. Airstream medallion lettering here, that's the backup camera, wireless backup camera that's up there. These panels here in the corner are all stretch form, so it comes with one long sheet. Airstream stretch forms it over a machine to get that beautiful curve to it. And then uh, this trailer was just waxed, it's got a little residue left on it. You wax it once a year, clean it, get the bugs off of it, keep it away from road salt. You do get salt on it, clean it, wax it. Just be mindful of your investment. 
another stabilizer jack. In this corner here, this is the furnace, the 25,000 BTU propane furnace exhaust on this side, so you want to keep this clear. I don't want to put park next to wood or uh, leaf pile. Refrigerator ventilation, so it allows fresh, cool air in and exhaust out the top vent there. So you have natural uh, venting behind the refrigerator. Absorption refrigerator does create some heat because it either has an electric element that creates heat or a propane flame that creates heat so it's proper that you have ventilation. They put insect screens here on the back of the refrigerator, a drip tube for condensation to drip out. And then the you know, if you look in most manufacturers, the refrigerator compartments, you see a lot of wood. This is all lined with aluminum, so if it does get wet, and you're not, you don't have to worry about wood rotting out. Propane line comes in, it's all sealed here at the bottom, and then it's plugged into electrical outlet here at the top, which is a GFCI protected outlet. And then they have the drip edge here that prevents water from getting inside, a seal here with openings at the bottom, and then it's set in further, that way if any water got in, it could still roll out. So Airstream does a great job protecting customers' investments by doing these extra steps of protection for water intrusion. Between the axles, there's a drain valve here for the freshwater tank that you could spin around and you could drain that tank down when you're done camping. There's also two low point drains, one for your hot water line, one for your cold water line for winterization that are tucked up inside. And that tank is dropped in an insulated chamber. Uh, there's a, a, a aluminum case around it. There's insulation and the tank slides right in there. So it's fully protected. This has um, never lube hubs on it. So these hubs don't require bearing maintenance. You do have to do bearing inspection and tolerance inspections. Has never adjust brakes. So you don't have to uh, always adjust your drum brakes. On board, they are self-adjusting, but you still have to have them inspected, the linings inspected. Check your lug nut torque periodically. Check your tire pressure before you drive. These are all things that make your trip a lot easier and uneventful if you do some inspections before you leave. Uh, the Goodyear Endurance tires are uh, special trailer tires. They're 225, 75, 15. These are low range E, so they're rated up to 80 PSI and 80 miles an hour. Uh, it has shock absorber each one of these uh, wheels, so there's four shocks on board on uh, the rubber torsion axle, which a uh, torsion axle gives you a much lower center of gravity, there's less moving parts, less wear, and they really last a long time and give your trailer a better ride so it's not as jarring when you're going on the road. If you look at a lot of leaf spring trailers, you know, the trailer tires, the little tiny tires, and the floor is all the way up here, and you can see clear through the bottom of the trailer. Uh, that's a higher trailer, higher center of gravity, more prone to sway. So with the lower center of gravity, really gives Airstream a benefit on the towing experience. That's what we hear from a lot of customers. If they're comparing it to something else they towed before, how much better an Airstream tows. Also too, it has to do with balance. Airstream is very mindful when they lay out a floor plan to have even weight distribution throughout, just like if you're a pilot and you're doing on an airplane. Uh, so these are very balanced trailers. This is the shore power connection. This is the 50 amp service uh, because this trailer has the upgraded uh, second air conditioner option. Comes with a 50 amp power cord, about 25 foot. This is where you plug in cable at a campground or a portable satellite dish. And then if you do satellite, you'll have to bring a receiver with you, an HDMI splitter to tie it to the system on board. City water connection. This allows you to supply city water pressure right to all your faucets and all your plumbing on board but it doesn't fill your tank this is just supplying water and the water pressure this has a water pressure regulator built into it that way if you do get an unexpected spike in water pressure it's going to protect your plumbing there's a black tank flush on board before we get there let me show you the black tank discharge this here is the freshwater tank fill so this is a gravity fill you take a a uh, white freshwater hose. We give you some really nice stuff in our RV starter kit to get you going. One of them things is the hose you're going to need. Stick that in there loose, turn the water on low, and let your tank fill and the air to escape. And it's lockable, so you know it's, it's a compartment that no one's going to confuse with anything and no one's going to accidentally contaminate your water. There's also an outside shower on board, so it has a wand that hangs up here, hot and cold water outside. Uh, if you're winterizing, you know, please <laughs> remember to get the water out of this as well. There's a discharge here for the gray and black tank. 
So we give you the premium waste hose that snaps on here. It stores in a storage tube underneath the trailer. So you can fit a total length about 20 foot in this storage tube. Slide it right in, keep it separate from the rest of your items. When it's time to empty the tanks, you're always gonna empty your black tank first. It's labeled as main holding tank. You take these little tethers off, you slide this out, and it'll allow the waste to discharge out the tube. When it's done flowing, you close it, lock it, and then you're gonna open up your gray tank, you just pull this to lock it, which is your auxiliary wash, and that's sink and shower waste. So you're gonna use that to wash out your waste hose, and that uh, you pull that straight out and let that flow through. When you're done, you close it. Now, if you're doing it this at night, and you can't see what you're doing, they give you a light outside to illuminate this area. Now you're all done with your trip, you're gonna pack it up and go back home. You're gonna empty the tanks for the very last time before you put it in storage. You could hook a garden hose up to this fitting here after the black tank valve is open and the waste is discharged. Under the water pressure from the campground, there's a wand inside the tank that'll spray the walls of the tank down to get rid of that residual waste and discharge it out your waste hose. Let that run for about five minutes, shut the water off, shut the tank, then open up your gray and clean everything out. If you do that, you don't have to worry about uh, excessive tank odor over time. Uh, it will really clean that tank out and, and protect your investment. Side window awning we talked about earlier goes a whole length. Cap to cap, cools the windows, cools the trailer, cools the refrigerator, wardrobe, shower. Really, really helps cool the trailer. Down. Roll it up, it's metal wrapped and has a little safety lock here when you're traveling. Another stabilizer jack. In this corner, we have the VIN plate with the tire information here on the side, tire pressure, so if you're ever questioning, you can always look here. Heavy duty stainless steel wrap protectors up front, so any debris that comes off your vehicle, instead of hitting the soft aluminum body, it's gonna hit the stainless steel wrap protector, and uh, it allows, there's a gap here to allow some deflection so it can bounce in and out without denting the body behind it. And because there's a gap here, you might get some debris stuck back there over time, so you can take these three nuts off, there's a hinge, and you can swing this out and clean leaves and debris out from behind it. The center rock guard, these are called solar stone guards, are tinted, and you can spin the neural knob on each side and lock in your height so you can open up the window from behind, but then it gains you access to some hardware here that you can take a screwdriver, turn a quarter turn, and you could swing this out and lift it off so you can clean your glass. We don't recommend ever towing with these off because you can shatter out your window and you don't want to overextend them because it will dent and crease the body here on the back. So you want to be mindful of that as well. The body's all aluminum. The roof is aluminum. It just has a white coating on it that helps reflect the sunlight, keep the interior temperature a lot cooler than what it is outside. It also allows a great adhesion point for all the seals and gaskets we have to put on the roof for the fans, the vents, all the hardware that's up top. Electric hitch jack up front, you can raise and lower. Very important to make sure the motor stops before you reverse the direction. If you hit down and say, oops, I meant to go up and hit up while the motor's still moving, you'll pop a fuse that's in your battery box. The fuse is for protection. It protects the motor when you make a mishap like that. So just be very mindful of that when you're using the hitch jack. There's light outside to illuminate this area at night. In the front compartment is a manual override that allows you to manually crank the trailer up and down if you blew the fuse. And there's a bubble level up top that allows you to get an idea if you're close to level, if you set this up and calibrate it. Trailer breakaway cable. You hook this up to your vehicle securely. If the vehicle and the trailer ever detach, this is gonna pull out and lock the brakes up on the trailer. You never wanna pull this out and leave it out. It will rapidly discharge your battery. It'll burn out the magnets in the brakes. So this is only used for emergency purposes. I pulled it out just for demonstration. Demco lock. Uh, this locks the coupler area uh, onto your ball. And then we give you a lock here to lock this so you can't lift it up and get a ball underneath it. And it's for anti-theft. The frame is a steel frame boxed all the way around. It's not a C-channel frame, so it's a very rigid frame. It takes a two and five sixteenth inch ball. We have safety chains that you're gonna crisscross and attach to your vehicle properly. And then the trailer has a seven-way connection. 
So your tow vehicle will need to have the proper receptacle and it's extremely important that your vehicle has a 12 volt charge lead not just for lights and, and turn signals, that you actually have a charge lead coming through here so your uh, wireless brake controller can work or your, your truck vehicle alternator will charge the batteries when you're driving down the road. Your vehicle's also gonna need an electric brake controller installed, whether you do a hardwired Bluetooth or wireless, you wanna get, you have to get one of those. Propane tanks, Colonial fills them for you. These are two 30 pound, seven gallon bottles. Uh, these bottles weigh about five pounds before you put propane inside. So they can weigh up to about, um, I'm sorry, these, these weigh about seven pounds. They, they weigh up to about 35 to 40 pounds if you fill them, so just be mindful of the weight of those. Take this twist lock off, thread it all the way up, and then you can lift the bottle cover off and then you can take your propane bottles out and get them filled. There's a regulator that allows you to switch from left to right bottle. If you have both bottles on and one bottle depletes, it will automatically switch to the other bottle as long as you had it on and, full, and it's full. There's a tether here in the back that keeps it down when you're driving. The batteries, because this has a solar charging system, came with the batteries from Airstream. These batteries are absorbed glass mat group 24 series lifeline 12 volt batteries giving you 80 amp hours a piece so combined 160 amp hours of battery. This is the fuse we talked about for electric hitch jack uh, that you would have to replace if you made a mistake. And then the battery box is big enough so if you ever wanted to do different battery upgrades over time you could do so. There's plenty of room for expansion for larger battery capacity. The front trunk compartment is lockable weather sealed, insulated, and has the same protection against water, that inner lip here. So there's a light inside so you can see what you're doing at night. There's a rubber mat in the floor to protect the floor. This is the big 50 amp power cord it comes with. And this is a dog bone adapter that goes from a four, four prong down to a three prong. Terminates one leg at a power so if you can adapt this trailer or plug it into 30 amp. Colonial gives you the adapter to go from a household electrical outlet 20 amp to the 30 amp for charging. They give you a tool that comes with the trailer and the manual override for the hitch jack. And then there's a propane quick disconnect hose that I'm going to show you on this side here where that goes. So what you do is you slide the collar back and you stick that hose into this fitting here and then turn the gas on and the hose will come out to about here and you can put a portable, low pressure compatible barbecue grill. Weber makes one, they co-brand it with Airstream. There's a specific one that will work on low pressure and uh, you can cook right here. They don't give you a long enough hose because they don't want you to cook underneath the awning and create a fire. If you have a high pressure grill, you just get an extension hose for it and hook it directly to one of your propane tanks. A couple more things I want to show you before we wrap this up. The spare tire that Airstream includes is a full size spare tire. It's on a steel wheel and it's cradled in underneath the trailer. And you want to check your tire pressure on that periodically and make sure that you're at the proper setting. That way if you do have an emergency, your tire is ready to go. And you lift that up, lock it in place, put the little pin in, which got up here. Next to that, there's a ZAMP solar port. So if you buy one of the ZAMP portable solar panels, you can plug it in there and help charge your batteries if you didn't have the factory solar charging system. And then on this side, we have the bedroom window, the Gerard water heater, there's really nothing to do in here, just make sure insects, there's no leaves in here, debris. Make sure the pressure relief valve is clear. There's an outside GFCI protect electrical outlet. There's a cooktop ventilation with little latches you have to open in order to vent outside. Porch light LED, and this is the clip to keep the entry door open and prevent it from swinging around on a windy day. Operate the awning. The zip D awning is very easy to use, but there are several steps. There's a wheel lock on either side. You undo it, push in, releases. All metal wrapped. There's a travel latch here. 
Another wheel lock here. Pull the strap in the middle. Check the weather, make sure there's not a storm coming through. You know, you can see the LED light strip on the body of the trailer. Once you get this in your hand, drop the stick. Spring load, it's gonna to wanna to go back up. So I'm gonna hold it as I'm going. If you have a partner that can hold the strap. Now I'm gonna take this rafter arm that's stored on the little perch here. I'm gonna snap it in on the end of the wheel. I'm gonna come this way and lock it in place. So what I did was put it here, but it still has some movement in and out here, expansion. There's a spring inside, and there's a little pin that sits in notches. So once I get it down a little way, I just lock it in place. Now I go all the way down to this side, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. All right, now I can lift the awning up. It's easiest if you stand on the inside of the awning, put your hand on the wheel, pull the release pin out, and lift. The straighter you keep these bars, the easier it is to slide in and out. So I got one, two, three, I'm gonna go one more. Four, remember to rhyme four by the door. You wanna be on number four by the door so the door clears the awning material. This side you could tilt if you wanted to. You could have it on two or three. And then the last step, you want to roll this up. Try to get it as neat as possible. And there's a little pouch that it can stick in. And now you have plenty of shade. Set your chairs up outside. This Airstream is available at Colonial Airstream. We're in Millstone Township, New Jersey, at State Highway number 33 at 08535. Our number here is 800-265-9019. You can visit us on the website at colonialairstream.com. We have a great Facebook page. It's uh, Colonial Airstream on Facebook. And if you want to follow me, I'm Colonial Patrick. Thanks for watching.